So, good afternoon. It's very crowded here, I see. So, <laughs> a lot of people probably went already or are having drinks at the bar. Uh, I'm Peter. I work in Vertif. I've been with the company for about 20 years. So, I have an IT background and I run our major accounts business in EMEA and also our modular solutions business. This is probably the last I'm going to say about Vertif, so don't expect from me any product presentations. I'm not going to talk about sine waves of UPSs, uh, so none of all of that. Um, first couple of slides, I will probably bore you, but then I want to get into something different, where I hope that we can also have a kind of discussion, and I would like to pick your ideas as well on how we can take this forward and make this something that is sustainable for the future. So, we talk about Edge. Probably not the first presentation today, and definitely not the last one. That will be around Edge. So, I call it the usual story. So, we have the key areas where we talk about data intensive, and we all know about that. We know about human latency. We know about machine-to-machine -machine latency. And the last one, the life critical. So these are what we see and what the industry is coming up as the use cases, the big segments, why we need edge data centers. Because a lot of people still say, okay, why do we need them actually? If you go in the Netherlands or in, in, in the UK, you can probably get a sub 10 second, a millisecond latency all over the UK. So why would you need extra edge data centers to bring certain applications to the end users? Well, there are applications that are actually going sub five milliseconds. And then, of course, we have to bring computing closer to the consumer. So where in the past you had hyperscale data centers, and you still have them, and you would bring the connection to that data center, now, we are going in a different world where you have the connectivity and we will bring the compute to that connectivity, which is closer to the end user, to the consumer. Applications, data intensive, we have a number of examples here, supply chain, we have surveillance, we have all of that, all these good things that are there and that consume an awful lot of data. We have the human latency, we have gaming, yeah. But would you build a complete 5G network with edge data center just for gaming? I don't think that the business case is really there, right? But then we have other applications that come with that, like streaming and God knows what else, and that might bring it to a level that, yes, we could do that. Then we have machine to machine. Yeah? And we see already a lot of that, although we don't typically notice it, yeah. But when we talk about traffic lights and the whole mechanism to synchronize and to make them uh, intelligent versus what they used to be, yeah, where you put stop and go every 300 meters in, in a big city, uh, that doesn't work anymore. Yeah, so we, with intelligence and with the latency that we need for that, we can bring that compute and make these systems intelligent. And then, of course, we have life critical autonomously driving cars being one of them, uh, when we talk about um, remote surgery and things like that. So life critical applications that are definitely there. So the segments, why do we need edge? What are the current applications? What are the use cases? And definitely there will be many, many more to come in the very near future. So we've been looking at this and we started, and I'm gonna put all of them up there, yeah. We go from edge in the device, where you will have intelligent lampposts and, and bus stops and, and all of kinds of objects that become the hub for computing, into a micro edge, which can be a small street cabinet. Yeah, we are used to those uh, in, the, in the telco world, but we see that now more and more, uh, that we have a couple of servers or half a rack or an entire rack, and that will show up as a micro edge. Then we go to the distributed, which is a little bit bigger, which goes to 250 kilowatt, half a megawatt, something like that, yeah, where you see, again, different applications coming. And then we go into the regional edge, which 
four, five megawatt. Yeah, when I started in this business, four or five megawatt was a damn big data center, right? <laughs> now we talk about this as an edge site, right? And it's five, four or five megawatt. So we, we've been scaling quite a bit, and these are the, the archetypes that we see. And each one of those has their own applications, their own needs for their existence. So I'm going to concentrate in the rest of the presentation, on the rest of the slides, on the distributed and the regional ones. Yeah, so we know what the applications are, we know what the big themes are, we know how we bring that into the market and how can we as an industry serve those. So we've done as a company a study where we look at sustainability and we've asked hundreds and hundreds of data center owners uh, and operators worldwide what their sustainability goals are and what they are looking for in an edge deployment. Guess what? The first thing that came up with 77% of the votes was an energy efficient UPS. Really? We are in 2022 and we still talk about an energy efficient UPS as the most important thing in edge computing when we talk about sustainability. We can get it from 98.5 to 99, yeah? Is that going to make the huge difference? I was very disappointed with that. Renewable energy, yes, I go with that. We see a lot of that happening also in the telco world, where a number of operators and, and tower companies, they go really for renewables. This thing started in Africa, but we see more and more coming also in EMEA, in Europe, where we have towers, where we have radio base stations, where there are solar panels, so that they be can become at least partially autonomous from the grid. So this is something, yes, if we can do that in edge, fantastic. Low water usage, okay. Five, six years ago, everybody was talking, all the big manufacturers, and we are one of those, we would be standing up here and say, evaporative cooling systems. That's what you have to go for. Yeah, very energy efficient. Well, it consumes an awful lot of water. Yeah, so when we talk about sustainability, water is definitely one of the scarce resources on this earth. You wouldn't say it when you're in the Netherlands, but it is. So we'd better work and really do something about that. So there are other solutions that we can definitely implement to take care of that. Then we have dynamic grid support came up with 29% of the people said dynamic grid support is something to go for. So dynamic grid support is, um, and I'm not very technical, but this is using the energy that you store in your batteries and the UPS to support the grid. The more renewable energy that you bring into a grid, the more unstable it gets, because you get frequency drifts and what have you. So we can put into the grid clean power because the UPS in double conversion creates clean AC power. So we can help the grid to stabilize itself by using that technology. So yeah, I'll go with that one. And then the last one they had on the list here of the top five was low GWP refrigerants. Well, that will not be a choice. We will have to do that. Yeah, because legislation will force us into that. And this is actually, of all the points that came up here, the only element where there is legislation that will drive us. All the other ones, yeah, somewhat, maybe in the PUE calculation and you have to hit a certain number or not, will have an influence. But this is the only one, actually, where politicians are really careful about. Strange, no? So this is what people say that are the top goals for sustainability for edge data centers. I was expecting completely different things. I don't know about you, but this is what hundreds and hundreds of data center owners and operators came up with. So I say, yes, and is that it? If we fix those points, do we have a sustainable solution? Do we have something that is future-proof? Do we have something that we want our kids and grandchildren to be proud of going forward? 
I would say, maybe not really. I take a little sidestep here. If you ask people what the data center industry is, and this is not research, yeah? this is me being in the industry for the last 20 years, and I talk to my neighbors, to my friends, to the people sitting next to me on the plane, and they ask you what you do, and you say, I work in data centers. And they will say, OK. But they have no idea what this actually means. The only thing, if they do know it, yeah, which I call 10% of the population, they think we are absolutely crap in what we're doing. Because we consume too much energy, we take up too much land space, yeah? we're too loud, yeah? noise regulations coming up everywhere, yeah? we use old technology, stinky diesel generators, hopefully nobody from CAT is in the room or so, yeah? but that's what it is, yeah? and we employ too few people for all the energy we consume and the space we take. Then we are crying every single day that we don't find people to join our industry. Finding a UPS engineer in Dublin is impossible. Well, you would have to pay him in gold. The same happens in Amsterdam, the same happens in Frankfurt. Yeah. And I heard Eugene from, from uh, Equinix say this morning, this is one of the biggest challenges that we have in the industry, is finding people who will operate all of this. Yeah. The answer lays in 90% of the people don't even know we exist. We have to do something about that. We as an industry, and with all these associations, the Dutch and the German and what have you, we have to work and work on our image as an industry. Because very soon, yeah, gray hair, a lot of that in the room, right? We need to work on that urgently. So 10% of the people think we don't do a great job, right? So what do we as an industry say about that? We deploy tens and hundreds of these data centers every year. Well, we're going to do more. Yeah, we're going to do hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands, because now we go from the big ones, we go into the smaller ones, into the edge. So we're going to do more, more of the same. We will try to get away with the diesel generators, yeah? but it will take another five, six years until fuel cells become something viable, yeah? because it's too expensive to do right now. So we'll, we'll get there. You know, we'll, we'll put the, the answer way in front of us. And by the way, all these smaller ones that we plan are now going to come right next to your house or right next to your garden. Yeah? They're going to take up your view. So this is what our answer is to everything that the people say, you use too much power, you use too much land, you don't employ people, yada, yada, yada. So we're going to do more. Sounds like a good idea. Right. On the other hand, we have the Gretas of this world that are probably one of the bigger consumers of all the services that we offer as the data center industry. But they don't know it. Yeah? And in their infinite wisdom, and I fully support them, they say, stop it. We want to live on a planet that will be there in 20 years, in 50 years, in 100 years. And they're absolutely right. But we still think the top five things, number one is give me an energy efficient UPS that goes from 98.5 to 99%. Yeah? Don't use water too much, yeah? and things like that. And that's going to make it. So I say, let's think outside the box. What can we do? What can we really do? And we start deploying all these edge data centers. Why can't, what, what can we do differently to become an integrated part of a larger ecosystem? And you will see them also on the next slides. We have the primary objective of an edge data center is to provide the compute closer to the end user with all the latency objectives that we've seen for the applications and the use cases we were talking about. 
That is paramount. What if we would use that edge data center where we have backup power, we are sitting on batteries? What if we would connect that in a condominium, for example, in a condo or in, uh, on an apartment block? What if we connect that to the solar and the renewable energy that every house is generating? And when you, I do that myself, I live in Italy, so we have quite a bit of sun there, yeah? And everything that I produce, I consume. If I overproduce, I sell it to the grid, and I get nothing for it, yeah? Why don't we store that energy? We have already, right around the corner, an edge data center where we have a UPS, where we have batteries. Why don't we just oversize these batteries? And whatever we need, whatever we produce that we don't use, we send it to those batteries and we store it there. And we can take it back whenever we need it. What is going to consume an awful lot of energy in the future is electrical vehicles. The good thing is, everybody thinks they're fantastic and they're green, yeah, sustainable. The bad thing is, the infrastructure is not ready for it. I want at my home to have, I want an electrical car, but the grid will never give me a 22 kilowatt attack. Simply not there. If you want a fast charger, it's 200 kilowatt. Just say you have an apartment block of 100 flats, and you have 100 cars that you have to charge at the same time. Where's all that power going to come from? The grid cannot support it. If we start using part of the infrastructure of an edge data center, we can actually offload part of the whole industry downstream, and also upstream we can make changes, because the grid will have to be redesigned. And the, our edge data center, since we have this energy sitting there in batteries, we can use that to level the peaks. We can take those peak loads off of the grid and support that with our batteries. So now we have already two things here. Yeah? We can use the energy, we can store it in our batteries in the data center, we can help to give it back to the households, right? And we can also start thinking about, can we charge vehicles at our edge data center? Why don't we turn our edge data center also in a charging point for electrical vehicles? Because we will be sitting there on a mass of batteries. Why don't we freaking use them? If you think about how many hundreds and thousands of megawatts of power is sitting in Amsterdam that is doing absolutely nothing in batteries. Just think about that. And you hope that you will never need it. But it's there. You have to maintain them. They need service. They need whatever. But they don't do anything for you. If we start using the batteries for the things I was just saying, we can give them an, an active use. I think we should look at that. Another thing is heat recovery. The edge data centers will come closer to our homes, as I said. Yeah? Heat recovery doesn't work well over kilometers and kilometers. But if you have the data centers, the edge data centers, that are coming back into the towns, coming back into living areas, we can start using the heat that the data center produces to heat houses, to heat schools, to do all of that. And all of a sudden, that also serves another purpose. I was saying in one of the earlier slides, one of the issues is noise production. What is producing noise in a data center? Fans. With heat recovery, we can eliminate an awful lot of the fan power that we need and the noise that these fans are producing. So that's another benefit we get. On top of that, these edge data centers will have a fantastic connectivity. Otherwise, 
they have no reason to exist. So we can use those edge data centers also as our hub from where the, the fiber is split into the house, into the homes. So we have actually a number of elements that can make this whole edge data center a lot more than what it actually in its primary purpose has. Do you still remember? Yeah, the primary use is to bring compute closer to the end user. So we have now a number of elements that bring this all together. Just listing them again. Acoustic friendly, heat houses, fiber connectivity, data storage, and compute. Power infrastructure, as I explained. Yeah. Energy storage, yes. Help to stabilize the grid. Electrical vehicle charging. So all of a sudden, we have turned something that is a burn on the environment that people don't like, people don't understand, into something that has a purpose for them and that brings them benefits. Our edge data center becomes a part of a new ecosystem that we develop. It becomes part, the data center, all of a sudden becomes part of our day-to-day -day life which is something it has never done. Yeah, we see it on this. Everybody knows how to use this. Nobody knows that every time you touch it, it's going to a data center, right? With doing what we just said, we can bring that data center closer to the people. We bring the whole industry a lot closer to the industry, to the people. And hopefully they will start to understand what that little box or that 10 by 20 building at the end of the, or in the corner there, what it actually does for them. And also, they will get benefits out of it with the energy storage, with the charging points, and with whatever there is. So we turn something stupid, which it was not before, into something usable. And I think that is what we really have to work on. If we do that, I think we will have a number of elements and a number of arguments that we will also bring our entire industry a lot closer to the people. And we go from a dumb, stupid edge data center into something that is fully integrated in a community. And I think then we can start talking about sustainability. Yeah? We have optimized everything for what its purpose is, and we multipurpose it for other things that had in the initial design of an edge data center nothing to do with that. That's what I wanted to share with you today. Any comments? Any questions from your side? Uh, my first question is, what are the challenges you guys have to, I know very little about edge data, in terms of what are your challenges for Is location a challenge? Um, connectivity, I would say, is no longer a challenge. Connectivity, you, you can get connectivity. Fiber yeah. <coughs> connectivity, fiber, that's not a big problem. Yeah. Power, power is always a problem. Yeah. Right? But we will need them anyhow. If you want 5G to work, it's not going to work with the infrastructure we have today. Yeah? So they need to, this needs to change. I was told once by a French operator, that they will need a data center. If you put a grid on a country, you will need a data center every 50 kilometers. Yeah, so that's just to support those, that kind of infrastructure. Yeah, so is that a problem? Well, we will have to live with it. Yeah, we have the, energy will be the, one of the big question marks for the future. Yeah, or is already, right? We see what happens with, with the gas prices right now. Yeah, and a lot of people start talking again, why, shit, why did we stop nuclear programs and things like that? Yeah, so Germany is going back, <laughs> Belgium is going back, they're not going to switch off the nuclear plant because they simply can't afford it. Yeah, sometimes decisions are taken by people that have no idea what they're talking about. And those were decisions made by such people. And they have to come back. 
Yeah, probably it was not a good idea to be 60% dependent on Russian gas, after all. Yeah. France is a lot better off. Yeah, they have nuclear power. Does it have its issues? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but you can deal with that. And the new generation will be a lot better. So that's what it is. Yeah. So I don't think that we have limitations from that point of view going forward. Yeah. But if we do not solve a number of very basic things, just imagine, nothing to do with edge data centers, just imagine that from tomorrow onwards, everybody decides to build a full or to buy a full electrical car. Forget it. Forget it. Can never work. Can never work. Yeah. So people have been sleeping. People have been living with the diesel engine <laughs> industry for many, many years. They went to bed with them, right? And they have been sleeping. And now all of a sudden, well, can't afford it anymore. It doesn't work. Yeah. This maybe can help a little bit. Right? Any other questions, comments? The algorithm, algorithms that the systems use is exactly made for that. So, and we are not the only ones that make this technology. Yeah? So many other people do in the industry. Yeah? So there are algorithms built into the box yeah, that always make sure that there is enough juice to keep the data center up and running. And that is always the number one priority. Yeah? So that is, that is software driven and that works. We have large, a large, large, large hyperscaler yeah, that is standardizing on these things. They have oversized their batteries now that they can come with 45 minutes of batteries because they also want to eliminate the diesel generators and just have batteries as a backup, right? And in the meantime, they do grid support. They do that. Yeah, we went through months and months of testing with them, yeah? but these things are there. That works. More than happy, and he's, he's a technical expert. He, he can tell you all about the algorithms that are behind that, that make that work. There was another question from the front, uh, back, sorry. Yes, I agree with you. And there was a slide, I can't find it right now, where I was saying, I would like, and this is the first time I actually openly talk about this stuff, uh, why don't we get, first of all, a couple of very smart people together, a lot smarter than me, to make a design on how this could work, and then see how can we bring this to market. I don't have the answer to your question. Yeah? But if we talk about this, one of the topics of this conference is strategy. Yeah. For me, strategy is not having a UPS that is a half a percent more efficient. Yeah. That's things of the past. Right? If we think about strategy, this is a new way of working, and, and how can we bring different parts and different stakeholders and different industries together to make something like this work? We are doing, an, let's call it an embryo of that, with a certain player in Germany to see, okay, what can we do? How can we bring at least two or three elements together? Not all of them, yeah, but at least start doing that. Now I'm working with somebody else, also happens to be in Germany, yeah, to see, okay, how can we do this on a bit bigger scale? Maybe not the, the full five elements or how many there are here, but at least the, the, the grid support, at least the charging part, and the edge data center, and the heat recovery. He owns apartments blocks. Well, why wouldn't we do that? Why don't we put an edge data center in the basement? 
right? You can heat the offices with it. You have super connectivity. Yeah, you can put extra batteries in there. You can do grid support. Yeah, so I agree it's maybe a bit of a long shot, but if we can bring in a number of, as I said, smart people together, I think we can work on the concept. Yes. So we've got the grid connections, we've got multiple locations, and now we just need some smart people to... Absolutely. So I'll get you some smart people. If you bring some smart people, we can do something smart together, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. But this has to... We have to stop seeing our box, our data center, as an individual thing, yeah, and integrate it in a community. That was my message today. And I think that there are some ideas. If you want to reach out to us, to me, more than happy to, as I said, bring some smart people together and talk about this. All right? Thank you. Thank you.